Hi guys and welcome back to LPJ Models. In this video I'm going to be building the 135th scale Tamiya Marder 3. As well as using the base kit I'm going to be using some aftermarket tracks. These R model white metal tracks are really nicely detailed and cleanly cast. And while some R model tracks come with pins, these just come with wire. And because Tamiya kits are so well known, I'm going to skip the sprue shots and head straight into the build. The parts were carefully removed from their sprues with my god hand single blade sprue cutters. And any leftover waste was either cleaned up with a scalpel or with a sanding stick. Extra care taken here will mean the build will go a lot smoother. To fix the parts together, I'm using VMS Styrene Cement Fast Setting. This has been decanted into an old Tamiya Extra Thin bottle to make it easier to apply. The hull is built up in several parts, a bottom, two sides and a back. When building up hull tubs like this, you need to be careful to make sure everything is lined up correctly. Luckily, with modern kits, or well-engineered ones, this isn't too much of a problem. There weren't too many mould seams to clean up, but the most noticeable ones were on the leaf spring suspension. These were scraped smooth with a Swan Morton 10A scalpel blade, and then brushed over with some of my cement to make sure they were extra smooth. I use this technique quite often as it slightly melts and levels the plastic. There were a few ejector pin marks on the underside of the fenders that needed cleaning up. This was done with sprue goo, which is a mix of styrene and extra thin cement. I've added a drop of black lacquer to mine, just for visibility. After I'd left it overnight to dry, I sanded away the excess. With the lower hull tub and suspension done, it's time to start working on the tracks. These R-model tracks, like I said earlier, are cast really nicely. But there's one downside to them, and that is the wire is really tough. It's like almost indestructible. And because of the shape of the tracks, I couldn't put the wire in and then trim it to size. I had to cut the pins separately, which was a bit time consuming, but it was worth the effort. So, once I'd slotted two track links together, I popped in the pin. And for some extra security, I put a drop of black superglue on the end, just to make sure it held. And this was then pushed in to sit flush with the tracks. These tracks were fairly fiddly, and that's probably because of their size, but they look great when they're done.
Next up, I started work on the fighting compartment and upper details. Strangely, Tamriya have supplied lots of nicely detailed ammo racks, but they're empty. I did spend some time trying to look for some aftermarket to fix this, but nothing came up. The fighting compartment sides were then glued in place. There were some visible ejector pin marks on the back of these, but I just sanded them away with a sanding stick. To make the exhaust look more realistic, I added some texture by stippling on some Mr. Surfacer 1000. Two piece barrels can be really tricky, so I made sure to glue this really carefully. Making sure it's lined up perfectly is key to not having to do any unnecessary cleanup later. But maybe I wasn't careful enough. There were a few gaps. These were filled with VMS black superglue. I only used a small amount and it was sanded back almost immediately. Once the barrel was tidied up, it was time to start work on the breech and the other gun mechanisms. Like everything leading up to this step, the fit was brilliant. With the gun shield done, that was all the construction finished, so it's time to move on to painting. The whole model was primed with Mr. Surfacer 1500 Black. This was thinned 40% primer to 60% Mr. Leveling Thinner. And I usually spray this at around 15 psi. All the airbrush work on this model is going to be done with my 0.15 Harder and Steenbeck Infinity CR. With the whole primer layer complete, the model was then sprayed with AK Real Colour Dunkel Brown. 
This model is going to be chipped with VMS chipping fluid, so this will act as my chipping layer. And once that layer was dry, you guessed it, I sprayed over several light coats of VMS Chipping Medium 3K. For my camouflage colour, I'm going to be using MRP Dark Yellow mixed with a few drops of their Sand Slash Tan. The original MRP Dark Yellow is really saturated, and whilst it's accurate, I prefer mine a bit paler. This was then built up in light, dryish layers. When working over a chipping fluid, you don't want to absolutely saturate the area of paint, or you might disturb that chipping fluid. So light coats is the order of the day. It was difficult to get into some of the cracks and crevices in the fighting compartment, but I did alright in the end. And once that layer was complete, I added some more sand and tan to my previous mix. This was just to add a few highlights to lift some of those panels. And, before we moved on to the chipping, I had to paint the camouflage. I mixed up some MRP Olive Green with some First World War British PC-12. In hindsight, I should have used the Olive Green straight out the bottle. But I can never seem to help myself when it comes to mixing paints. This squiggly camo pattern was sprayed at around 8 psi and each individual squiggle was built up with several passes. I didn't try to go for full coverage in one go. And with the camera complete, I finally got around to chipping. 
I used a mix of tools for chipping this marder. First up, I used my interdental brush. It's become a firm favourite on my workbench when it comes to chipping. It's just a little bit more aggressive than a regular paintbrush, so it's great for lacquers. And on some areas, I bought out the big guns. I had an old bare metal foil panel scriber lying around, and I used this to scrape away some of the paint on the raised areas. With the same tool, I added some scratches to the floor of the fighting compartment. I imagine this area would get quite beat up. And it wouldn't be one of my build videos without some kind of mistake. When chipping the side of the fighting compartment, a massive flake came off, which is quite unusual. But anyway, I had to fix it. The area was first sanded with an Infini Model 2000 grit sanding sponge. Once I'd sanded it down so it looked fairly smooth, I sprayed the base colour back over this area. And once this paint layer was dry, I sanded it again, and then sprayed it again until it was dead smooth. I don't mind having to do small fixes like this, because the more I do it, the better I'm going to get. So with that big whoopsie fixed, it's time to move on to the decals. I didn't use the kit supplied ones, I had to rummage around in the spares box, but luckily I had balcon curves of the right size. The surface was initially treated with VMS decal set and fix, and the decals were then slid carefully into place. And once they dried, they were given a layer of VMS satin varnish just to seal them in and hide any carrier film. The contact areas on the wheels were painted with Citadel Ironbreaker. And this was followed up by painting the tyres, aka 3rd gen acrylic, smoke black. Next up, it's time to blacken the tracks. For this, I'm using VMS Black Track Pro 2 Extra. This is different to the older VMS mix, in that it's one part instead of two. So you just need to pour it in a container and brush away any air bubbles. And it really doesn't take long before it starts changing colour. Once the tracks had blackened, the contact areas were sanded with an Infini Model sanding stick. The 
the handles for the tools were painted in a light tan colour and then the wood grain was created with oils. If you're interested in learning about this technique further, why not check out my video on the subject, Painting Wood Grain with Oil Paint, The Ultimate Guide. Just click the link in the description. The exhaust was pre-painted in rust and grey tones. This was then given a layer of chipping fluid and then some dark yellow. Once it was dried, the paint was chipped away with my interdental brush, showing a nice worn exhaust. It's now time to stick on a few final parts before we move on to weathering. The exhaust and the tools and other small accessories were glued in place. To start the weathering I'm going to do a chipped dust layer. The entire model was given another layer of VMS chipping medium 3K. This is to help release some of the dust paint I'm going to apply later and make it look more natural and random. For my dust colour, I mixed up some Tamiya dark yellow with some flat earth. This was thinned about 70% thinner to 30% paint and then sprayed lightly over areas where dust would collect, including in the fighting compartment, the running gear and up the hull sides. And with a slightly dampened brush, some of the excess was wiped carefully away. This was followed by a wash of Abtelung 502 sepia, thinned with VMS Universal Weathering Carrier Light. This was applied carefully around all the raised details on the model. And once the wash was dry, everything was sealed in with a layer of VMS matte varnish. Now a tank wouldn't be a tank without any mud. I mixed up some static grass and some stone cast plaster powder with some AK splashes effects dry step. I wanted to try to replicate dry mud with bits of grass in it so I thought this was the way to go. The AK dry step splashes effects was poured into my plaster and static grass mix. This was then given a thorough stir.
I then realised that this mix was way too dry, so I added some more. That'll do the trick. This goopy mud mix was painted all over the running gear and lower hull. And because it's effectively enamel based, with some thinners I can just remove any if I get any where I don't want it. And as the build was coming to a close, it was a good time to put the tracks on for good. I love using metal tracks, they give you a sag and a weight that you don't get with plastic. But the big downside is the cost increase. I mean these tracks cost about as much as the kit did. I then thinned my mud mix with some Universal Weathering Carrier Light and brushed this all over the tracks. To add some variation to the dry mud, I highly thinned some Abtelung 502 sepia and carefully washed this around some of the details. Now for an extra bit of spice on this paint scheme I'm going to be doing a captured version. This marder was captured somewhere in Eastern Europe and had some funky hand painted markings. These were painted on with Vallejo stencil. And this was slightly thinned with water so it would flow a bit better. I was holding my breath the entire time I was painting this star. I know it didn't have to be perfect because the original wasn't, but I didn't want it to look rubbish. Luckily it came out alright in the end. And also one thing to note is because this was painted recently, I'm painting this over the weathering. So these markings won't look overly blended in because I didn't want them to. This was fresh paint straight after capture. It's now time to bring some of the final elements together. The fold away seating for the crew was glued in place with super glue. And I also gave the exhaust a very light rust wash.
and for the final touches I included some of the empty shell casings that Tamiya supplied. These were first painted in Mr. Colour GX2, a very high gloss lacquer paint. This was thinned with Mr. Leveling Thinner and it is absolutely brilliant. Next up, the casings were given a layer of Alclad polished brass. Which was then followed by some Alclad pale burnt metal, just to tone the brassiness down a little bit. And once they were dropped in place, the build was complete. Before we get to the gallery photos, I'd like to give a huge thanks to my patrons for supporting my work. You guys are awesome and I couldn't run this channel without your help. If you're interested in becoming a patron, just head over to www.patreon.com forward slash lpjmodels. And also, Keep your eyes peeled for the second part of this video, coming soon. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I'm so close to 30,000, which is really amazing. Also, don't forget to hit that like button and leave a comment below. Let me know what you think, whether you liked it or you didn't. Any engagement helps get this video to more people. Anyway, I'm James from LPJ Models. Thanks for watching.